Hey all, today we're going to talk about when Smith & Wesson ruled the world. Now if you like this content, like, sub, shares, all that good stuff, I really appreciate it. Also down below, click on codes and merch to help support the channel. So, long time viewers of the channel know that I am no stranger to complaining about Smith & Wesson and their modern quality control and their modern issues and frankly the fact that they seemingly don't care as a company to produce a product that's worth uh, the Smith & Wesson name. But today we're going to talk about a gun that's before all that. So this is a Smith & Wesson 5906. This is what Smith & Wesson was producing before the M&P series, before they put internal locks on their revolvers. This was before the crazy Glock polymer striker fired craze. This is a double single action hammer fired all metal double stack nine millimeter. So let's shoot it a little bit and see how it does after all this time. Not bad for a gun that was designed by people that thought magazine disconnects were a good idea. So the nice thing is it has a safety decocker. So what I can do is I can cock the hammer, say the hammer is cocked, and then I can flip down the safety and that decocks the gun, puts it on safe. So then nothing happens. And then I can just flip it up like so and take a few more shots. I gotta say, one of the only things about these guns that's a little bit disappointing is, and these are factory original mags, is this big old thing is only 15 rounds. Now, I suspect there's probably aftermarket. I haven't done too much research into it. But for a gun this size, 15 rounds, kind of a little bit low. But you gotta understand, this was something coming out in the 90s. I forget, I think they stopped production of these in 1999. So, you know, we've come a little bit of a way further with magazine technology in the last... 20 something years. But let me take some shots in just double action because even though post people complain about double action triggers being difficult to shoot, this one really does shoot pretty smooth, even with that magazine disconnect. So we're going to decock the gun, take a few shots just in double action. Honestly, that trigger is pretty nice. Put it back on safe like so. So this gun is a good example of how it's really a shame what Smith & Wesson became. Because honestly, this, like so many people, you know, you, you see old cop movies, 80s, 90s cop movies, and you saw a lot of these pop into them. You know, obviously the Beretta 92 and stuff was also very prevalent. But this gun, too, was very popular, carried by a, used by a lot of police departments, stuff like that. You know, this one, we believe it might have been a police gun, just as you can see all the uh, wear and everything on it. Um, but, you know, even after all that, this runs really good. Like, I've done, we haven't even cleaned this. Uh, you know, we picked it up and <laughs> literally brought it out here. And without it cleaning, without anything, it just runs as it should. Plus, the all-metal frame really soaks up the recoil. That's something I uh, got to say is, unlike the newer polymer frame guns, yeah, they're a little bit lighter. But this, because it's all steel, really soaks up the recoil and is just overall a, a more pleasant gun to shoot. You know, the ergonomics are really nice on it. You get a nice high grip. You don't get any hammer bite because it's got a nice beaver tail like that. Um, honestly, you know... I really wish Smith & Wesson still produced this series. It's a cool time capsule as to when Smith & Wesson ruled the world as far as, you know, all the, the police departments carried their revolvers, and then, you know, they kind of, people switched over to semi-automatics, and Smith & Wesson was right there. 
you know, ready to produce uh, semi-automatics of decent quality, you know, to take over those roles. So anyway, that's my quick thoughts on the uh, 5906 Smith & Wesson. They're definitely a cool gun. And if you're looking for something to carry that's, uh, you know, an all steel, uh, you know, really nice double single action gun, I gotta say, you can't do much better than something like this. Uh, you know, it seems like these, this in particular, you know, there's lots of versions of this first, second, and third generation Smith semi-autos that, uh, you know, they're, they're, nobody really wants them, right? But it was a particularly difficult time tracking down the 5906 and after shooting it i can see why because this thing still holds up even today you know 20 years after it was out of production as something that could definitely be you know a full-size carry a duty gun anything like that but uh put down below what experience you have with the smith and wesson 5906 and i'll see you all later